Punya Shravana Kirtana, Ediantaxto Hibadrani, Radiantasto Hibadrani, we do not Satam, we do not Satam, to hear about Krishna from Vedic literatures, to hear about Krishna from Vedic literatures, or to hear from him directly through the Bhagavad Gita, or to hear from him directly from, through Bhagavad Gita, is itself righteous activity. Is itself righteous activity. And for one who hears about Krishna, and for one who hears about Krishna, Lord Krishna is dwelling within everyone's heart. Lord Krishna is dwelling within everyone's heart. Acts as a best wishing friend. Acts as a best wishing friend. And purifies the devotee who constantly engages in hearing of him. And purifies the devotees who constantly engage in hearing of him. Nasta praesu bhadresu. Nasta praesu bhadresu. Nityam bhagavata sevaya. Nityam bhagavata sevaya. Bhagavati uttama sloke. Bhagavati uttama sloke. Bhakti bhavati nastiki. Bhakti bhavati nastiki. In this way, a devotee naturally develops his dormant transcendental knowledge. In this way, a devotee naturally develops his dormant transcendental knowledge. As he hears more about Krishna from the Bhagavatam. As he hears more about Krishna from Bhagavatam and from the devotees. And from the devotees, he becomes fixed in the devotional service of the Lord. He becomes fixed in his devotional service of the Lord. Tadarajas tamo bhava. Tadarajas tamo bhava. Kamaloba dayasche. Kamaloba dayasche. Cheta itara navidam. Cheta itara navidam. Stitam sattve prasidati. Stitam sattve prasidati. By development of devotional service. By development of devotional service. One becomes freed from the modes of passion and ignorance. One becomes freed from the mode of passion and ignorance. And thus material lusts and avarice are diminished. Evam prasanna manaso. Evam prasanna manaso. Bhagavat bhakti yoga taha. Bhagavat bhakti yoga taha. Bhagavat tattva vigyanam. Bhagavat tattva vigyanam. Mukta sangha sujayate. Mukta sangha sujayate. When these impurities are wiped away, when these impurities are wiped away, the candidate remains steady in his position of pure goodness. The candidate remains steady in his position of pure goodness. Becomes enlivened by devotional service. Becomes enlivened by devotional service. And understands the science of God perfectly. And understands the science of God perfectly. Vidyate hridaya grantis. Vidyate hridaya grantis. Siddhyante sarvasam saya. Siddhyante sarvasam saya. Siddhyante chasya karmani. Thus, Bhakti Yoga severs the heart, not a material affection. And enables one to come at once to the stage of a samsayam samagram. Understanding of the Supreme Absolute Truth, Personality of Godhead. Therefore, only by hearing from Krishna or from his devotees in Krishna consciousness, one can understand the science of God. One can understand the science of God. Srimad Bhagavatam, Canto 1, Chapter 17, Verse Number 16. Raj no hi paramo dharma. Raj yo hi paramo dharma. Swadharma stanupalanam. Swadharma stanupalanam. Sasato nyan yata shastram. Shasato nyam yata shastram. Anapad utpatan iha. Anapad utpatan iha. Translation by Srila Prabhupada. The supreme duty of the ruling king is to give all protection to the law-abiding persons and to chastise those who stray from the ordinance of the scriptures in ordinary times when there is no emergency. Hmm. Purport by His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami, Srila Prabhupada. In the scriptures, there is mention of Apad Dharma or occupational duty at times of extraordinary happenings. It is said that sometimes the great sage Vishwamrita had to live on the flesh of dogs in some extraordinary dangerous position. 
In case of emergency, one may be allowed to live on the flesh of animals of all description. But that does not mean that there should be regular slaughterhouses to feed the animal eaters and that this system should be encouraged by the state. No one should try to live on flesh in ordinary times simply for the sake of the palate. If anyone does so, the king or the executive head should punish him for gross enjoyment. There are regular scriptural injunctions for different persons engaged in different occupational duties, and one who follows them is called swadharma sta, faithful in one's prescribed duties. In the Bhagavad Gita, 1848, it is advised that one should not give up his occupational prescribed duties, even if they are not always flawless. So it's such swadharma might be violated in cases of emergency. If one is forced by circumstances, but they cannot be violated in ordinary times. The state executive head is to see that such swadharma is not changed by the follower, whatever it may be, and he should give all protection to the follower of swadharma. The violator is subject to punishment in terms of the Shastra and the duty of the king is to see that everyone strictly follows his occupational duty as prescribed in the scripture. Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. So this is very interesting because uh, in exceptional times of you know, great emergencies, it could be war, it could be famine, it could be due to many different issues, flooding, hurricanes, earthquakes, tsunamis, etc. Sometimes it's necessary to maintain life. So if there's absolutely nothing else to eat, except things that are crawling around or, or walking with four legs and a tail, then you have the right to eat them, just to stay alive. But you shouldn't do what they do in uh, Wuhan, China, and many other places in Far East, in Asia, and in Africa. In Africa, as in Wuhan, China, they eat almost anything that crawls or walks. And uh, it's horrible what they eat. They eat snakes, they eat rats, they eat pigs, they eat all kinds of uh, strange animals. The, the pangolin, which is a horrible looking animal. And, and uh, they somehow or other cut off all the hair and just cook it on coals, charcoal. And they eat it. They eat maggots. In Africa they have these big maggots like, like this. And they eat the whole thing. So, but in China, actually, I asked Dr. Mark Shen, he's a Chinese, and I asked him the question, why he can, I mean, he said that Chinese can eat whatever can move. <laughs> they can eat whatever that moves. So he said that there was some history, like, I don't know whether... That means they don't eat dead bodies. Right? Yeah. yeah. But, they, they but if the dead body <laughs> moves, they can eat it, right? <laughs> <laughs> A habit. habit over a period of time. Yeah, that's like because they don't have good leaders. Yep. The leader would, would punish them in ordinary times. They eat those horrible animals. Yeah. It's, only, it's only meant in very severe emergencies, very severe emergencies. Sometimes it happens. There's nothing else yeah. to eat. I, I remember this, uh, there was an earthquake in Armenia in the 1980s and this one uh, grandmother and her granddaughter were uh, buried in the rubble in <laughs> and they had they they stayed there alive for about almost a week 
And the mother kept the baby alive by cutting her finger and letting the baby suck her blood. And she also did that a little somewhat just to stay alive. So there are emergencies where sometimes you have to do things that normally you would never do. But that's not an excuse to continue to doing those things after the emergency is over. And if there's a good leader, he will punish people who do that. The Prabhupada mentioned a lot about when the Christian is said about the fish and with Jesus Christ. Yeah. Um, Prabhupada said that at, according to time, place, circumstances, there was nothing else to eat at that time. So Jesus Christ ordered him to eat fish at that time. He also said, if you can multiply four <laughs> fish <laughs> yeah. and feed 4,000 people, you can eat it also. <laughs> so, so if you don't have that power that Jesus had, then you should not even dare to think of it. Yes, so uh, so you, like, like we were discussing yesterday, such a thing as swadharma or swakarma. So uh, the swadharma or the occupational duty according to one's psychophysical position in life should be followed. Now, even devotees even though the devotee is transcendental to the Varnashram system, because we're coming from such low backgrounds. A low background means the Garbhadhan samskar was not performed and other samskars maybe were not performed. And uh, we didn't grow up in a, let's say, a pure Vaishnava uh, context. And we went to schools where we learned uh, all kinds of nonsense things and speculation and, and so forth and we might have engaged in sinful activity unknowingly or knowingly. Both things have karmic reactions. Unknowingly committing sins and knowingly committing sins. They both have reactions. So uh, to protect ourselves, uh, Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur reestablished the uh, Daiva Varnashram system to be followed by devotees, even though they're initiated, even though they're considered Vaishnavas, etc. Uh, for basically two reasons. One, to protect ourselves from ourselves, you know, and two, to protect ourselves from uh, outside influence. So therefore, the Varnashram system is Varnas, and there's ashramas. Each position, whether in the varnas, varnas or in ashramas, has definite definitions of how you should live and what are the symptoms of a person who's living in that ashram or that varna correctly. For example, let's say you're a brahmachari. A brahmachari is supposed to uh, sacrifice, right? He sacrifices the hearing and speaking to only hearing about Krishna and speaking about Krishna. He sacrifices the seeing to only only meditate on, on the deity and the transcendental form of the Lord. He sacrifices uh, the hearing and speaking, like I said, and so forth. There, this, this, all these things are described in the fourth chapter of Bhagavad Gita. And a grihasta should give in charity. And not eat until he's sure that everyone else in his close vicinity has taken prasadam. And uh, the Vanaprastha has to live in uh, uh, break attachment to home and hearth and family by uh, traveling to holy places and hearing discourses by great uh, acharyas and so forth. And then the sannyasi has to be completely renounced. He cannot associate with women, uh, cannot hear them singing and things like that. There's a whole, a whole bunch of rules, strict rules that you have to follow. There's no such thing as a, uh, a uh, uh, brahmacharya grihasta, for example. In other words, a brahmacharya grihasta is someone who works and keeps the money 
doesn't give it to Guru or give it to the temple. That's a Brahmacharya Grihasta. He's living, he, he's acting like a Grihasta, but he's wearing the clothes of a Brahmachari. There's no such thing as that. And if someone does that, immediately they have to be disciplined because uh, they're not living within their ashram. So that's, that's why Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur, although he's the top uh, Mahabhagavat devotee, he took sannyas. Of course, his guru wasn't present, so he took sannyas by looking at the picture of his guru. Now, many people criticized him for doing that. But it was the correct thing to do because there were too many Vaishnavas at that time who were doing nonsense. And there were already uh, 13 or more upper Siddhanta uh, disciplic successions, so called disciplic successions. There were people who were saying they were descended from Lord Nityananda or from Advaita Charya, but they were doing nonsense. Uh, chanting Hare Krishna and smoking uh, marijuana and so forth. So, to stop all that nonsense, he took sannyas and basically reestablished the daiva, established the daiva varnashram system where people, although they're Vaishnavas, they do follow all the rules of either the varnas or the ashramas. So that is to not only give an example to the rest of society, but to also uh, protect themselves from deviating. Uh, Okay, so these rules, uh, Prabhupada says, there are regular and spiritual injunctions for different persons engaged in different occupational duties, and one who follows them is called swadharmasta, or faithful to one's prescribed duties. So then he quotes this verse from the uh, 18th chapter, 47th and 48th verse. So here, it's in the 47th, says, Sian Shreyan Swadharmo Viguna Paradharma Swanustitat Swababa Niyatam Karma Kurvam Napnoti Kilbusam. It is better to engage in one's own occupation, even though one may perform it imperfectly, than to accept another's occupation and perform it perfectly. Duties prescribed according to one's nature are never affected by sinful reactions. So here it's talking about swadharma, as it is in this, in this verse today. He, Prabhupada says, it is advised that one should not give up his occupational prescribed duties, even if they are not always flawless. In other words, even if they're done incorrectly, sometimes. And he says, Swad, such swadharma might be violated in case of emergency if one is forced by circumstances, but they cannot be violated in ordinary times. The state executive head is to see that such swadharma is not changed by the follower, whatever he may be, and he should give all protection to the follower of swadharma. The violator is subject to punishment in terms of the shastra. And the duty of the king is to see that everyone strictly follows his occupational duty as prescribed in the scripture. So here in the purport to 1847, and then we'll look at 1848, Prabhupada says, one's occupational duty is prescribed in Bhagavad Gita. As already discussed in previous verses, the duties of a Brahmana, Kshatriya, Vaishya, and Sudra are prescribed according to their particular modes of nature. One should not imitate another's duty. A man who is by nature attracted to the kind of work done by the sudras should not artificially claim to be a brahmana, although he may have been born into a brahmana family. In this way, one should work according to his own nature. No work is abominable it, if performed in the service of the Supreme Lord. The occupational duty of a brahmana is certainly in the mode of goodness, but if a person is not by nature in the mode of goodness, he should not imitate the occupational duty of a brahmana. For a chatriya or administrator, there are so many abominable things. A chatriya has to be violent to kill his enemies, and sometimes a chatriya has to tell lies for the sake of diplomacy. Such violence and duplicity accompany political affairs, but a chatriya is not supposed to give up his occupational duty and try to perform the duties of a brahmana. One should act to satisfy the Supreme Lord. For example, Arjuna was a Chatriya. He was hesitating to fight the other party. But if such fighting is performed for the sake of Krishna, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, there is 
uh, there need be no fear of degradation. In the business field also, sometimes a merchant has to tell so many lies to make a profit. If he does not do so, there can be no profit. Sometimes a merchant says, oh, my dear customer, for you, I am making no profit. <laughs> but one should know that without profit, the merchant cannot exist. Therefore, it should be taken as a simple lie. You notice the word simple lie, right? It's, it's a simple lie is a lie that when someone finds out that they were lied to, they're not really upset. And a complex lie is a lie that when a person finds out that they're a victim of a complex lie, they get really upset. Right? So, <laughs> there, therefore, it should be taken as a simple lie if a merchant says that he is not making a profit. But the merchant should not think that because he is engaged in an occupation in which telling, the telling of lies is compulsory, he should give up his profession and pursue the profession of a brahmana that is not recommended. Whether one is a chatriya, a vaisya, a sudra, doesn't matter if he serves by his work the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Even brahmanas who perform different types of sacrifice sometimes must kill animals because sometimes animals are sacrificed in such ceremonies. Similarly, if a chatriya engaged in his own occupation kills an enemy, there is no sin incurred. In the third chapter, these matters have been clearly and elaborately explained. Every man should work for the purpose of yagya or for, Krishna or, or for Vishnu and the Supreme, person, uh, the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Anything done for personal sense gratification is a cause of bondage. The conclusion is that everyone should be engaged according to the particular mode of nature he has acquired and he should decide to work only to serve the Supreme Cause of the Supreme Lord. Now, there's something that we have to say, however, to clarify this. So we don't all say, oh, okay, well, I, I'm a sudra, so, you know, uh, that's my nature. And, uh, and, and it says somewhere else, the sudras don't have to chant Hare Krishna. No. Uh, that may be true in, that's, no, it's not true, but it may be the case in some uh, context where there's no, access to Krishna consciousness and Krishna conscious gurus and Krishna conscious temples and Krishna conscious practitioners. But it's not true for the devotee. Even a devotee says, well, I'm a sudra, that's okay. But he still has to follow the rules and regulations of Krishna consciousness. So now here, here's the difference. Uh, what Prabhupada is basically, what, what Krishna is basically saying is that uh, even if you have a sudra type of, let's say, natural propensity. The, the, the verse that is most important is yatak parvatir bhutanam yena sarvam idam tatam swakarmana tam abhyarcha siddhim vindanti manava. This says, by worship of the Lord, who is the source of all beings and who is all pervading, a man can attain perfection through performing his own work. So, for the devotee, you see, the Dharmanashram system is to gradually bring people to the stage where they become Krishna conscious. The devotee is immediately Krishna conscious by accepting bona fide uh, instruction and following the rules and regulations of Krishna consciousness. But in order to protect the devotee from his own weaknesses or her own weaknesses, uh, we accept the Daiva Varnasram system. And therefore, you have people who have the tendency of being sudras, vaishas, or uh, uh, chatriyas, or brahmanas. Most of the devotees are elevated to the level of brahmana uh, just by, uh, because of deity worship and because of their uh, lifestyle. But they can perform other work also that's the difference. Someone who's Krishna conscious, uh, like for example, Vishwamrita Muni or uh, Dronacharya, uh, they were more or less Krishna conscious. Therefore, they could do any work. So, uh, Dronacharya uh, acted as a Kshatriya, and Vishwamrita Muni, who was a Kshatriya, acted as a Brahmana. However, uh, 
the devotees, most of them become brahminical. Not all of them, but most of them become brahminical. You, there's no absolute necessity to, to t undertake the activity of, of a brahmin in Krishna consciousness because as long as you're offering all the results of our activity to Krishna, whether it's from a position of a common worker or a businessman or a, uh, a warrior or, or administrator, uh, as long as our work is, uh, the result of our work is going to Krishna and we're following the instructions of Guru, uh, we're in a transcendental position. Okay. But for the general society, the Daiva Varnasram system is to help them come gradually to the stage of being Krishna conscious because they're so affected. Not everyone is going to accept Krishna consciousness right away. Okay. So there's only a small percentage of the society that will that, that will accept it right away, and most people will will be hesitant to do it right away. So therefore, establishing the Daiva Varnashram system today in society is favorable for the right, let's say, form of activity for people to be gradually elevated to the position of Krishna consciousness. But for the devotees, they come almost immediately to Krishna consciousness if they're not honest, if they're honest and if they accept uh, the instructions of uh, uh, bona fide devotees. So, Prabhupada explains, Sahajam Karma Konte, uh, when Krishna says in 1848, every endeavor is covered by some fault, just as fire is covered by smoke. Therefore, one should not give up the work born of his nature, O son of Kunti, even if such work is full of fault. So this is for the general public. And in a sense, it's a, uh, it's a reminder to devotees that if you are making mistakes in Krishna consciousness, uh, by staying in Krishna consciousness and taking advice, you can correct those mistakes. By going away, you won't correct those mistakes. So. The most important thing for devotees is always staying in the association of good devotees. That's extremely important. So, and Prabhupada writes in the purport, in conditional life, in conditioned life, all work is contaminated by the material modes of nature. Even if one is a brahmana, he has to perform sacrifices in which animal killing is necessary. Of course, that's not in Kali Yuga. Animal sacrifice is, is uh, forbidden in Kali Yuga. For brahmanas. It was normal in previous ages. They would sacrifice animals because they could bring them back alive again. <clears throat> Similarly, a chatriya, however pious he may be, has to fight enemies. He cannot avoid it. Similarly, a merchant, however pious he may be, must sometimes hide his profit to stay in business. Or he may sometimes have to do business on the black market. These things are necessary. One cannot avoid them. Similarly, even though a man in, is a sudra serving a bad master, he has to carry out the order of the master, even though it should not be done. Despite these flaws, one should continue to carry out his prescribed duties, for they are born out of his own nature. So a devotee reading this should understand that this is meant, or these, these let's say, concessions are meant for the general public in their attempt to gradually come to the point of Krishna consciousness through accepting the Varnashram system. But a devotee strictly has to, especially if they're initiated, strictly has to follow all the regulative principles. And if they uh, miss uh, one or two of the principles, they have to immediately take instruction how to correct themselves and stop it. Okay. So a very nice example is given here. Although fire is pure, still there is smoke. Yet smoke does not make the fire impure. Even though there is smoke in the fire, fire is still considered to be the purest of all elements. <clears throat> if one prefers to give up the work of a chatriya and take up the occupation of a brahmana, he is not assured that in the occupation of a brahmana there are no unpleasant duties. One may then conclude that in the material world no one can be completely free from the contamination of material nature. This example of fire and smoke is very appropriate in this connection. When in winter time one takes a stone from the fire, sometimes smoke disturbs the eyes 
and other parts of the body. But still, one must make use of the fire despite disturbing conditions. Similarly, one should not give up his natural occupation because there are some disturbing elements. Rather, one should be determined to serve the Supreme Lord by his occupational duty in Krishna consciousness. That is the perfectional point. When a particular type of occupation is performed for the satisfaction of the Supreme Lord, all the defects in that particular occupation are purified. When the results of work are purified, when connected with devotional service, one becomes perfect in seeing the self within, and that is self-realization. So these two verses, 1846, three verses, 1846, 47, and 48, explain the Varnasram system, Daiva Varnasram system for the general public, and, uh, but for devotees, uh, they immediately come to the position of devotional service because they accept Krishna consciousness, they're attracted to it. But they also follow the Varna Ashram system or the Daiva Varna Ashram system for the, their own protection and for giving an example to the normal people in society. So this is a, a, a further elaboration of what we discussed yesterday. Ultimately, the most important point Prabhupada explains in the sixth chapter, he says, it's two things. One is, uh, the verse, lam, lam, yam ladva chaparam labam, manyate nadikam tata, yasmin stito ladu kena, gunu, gunu napi bichalyate. This is the sixth chapter, 22nd verse. And it says, established us, okay, it says, upon gaining this joyous state, the devotee thinks there is no greater gain. Being situated in such a position, one is never shaken, even in the midst of greatest difficulty. Indeed, this indeed is actual freedom from all miseries arising from material contact, contact. So unless we come to a position of being fully satisfied and happy in Krishna consciousness, we have the possibility of uh, being affected by the modes of material nature. This happiness is the nature of the soul and happiness that is fully satisfied by being Krishna conscious by virtue of acquired knowledge and realization and practical activity in Krishna consciousness, then one is liberated in this world, even though they're acting in, in ways that looks like ordinary material life, but it's not, because they are above the influence of the modes and they're doing everything to please the Lord. This is the real condition of uh, transcendental Krishna consciousness. So one last point Prabhupada makes. He says in the sixth chapter, 15th verse, he says, um, yes. He says, therefore, a person working in Krishna consciousness is the perfect yogi because his mind is always absorbed in Krishna's activities. Savai manak Krishna padara vindo. In the Vedas also, Svetasvatara Upanishad, we, we learn, tam eva viditvati mrityum eti. One can overcome the path of birth and death only by understanding the Supreme Personality of Godhead Krishna. In other words, perfection of the yoga system is the attainment of freedom from material existence and not some magical jugglery or gymnastic feats to be full innocent people. So by understanding Krishna, you become liberated. And therefore we should focus our mind on understanding Krishna by regularly hearing 
and chanting. Understanding that Krishna is the supreme personality of Godhead, the source of the Paramatma, the source of the Brahma Jyoti, and he, is, he has infinite number of expansions. So if you understand Krishna and his Vishnu expansions, you are liberated. Janma karma chame divyam ivam yuvati tatvata tyakvateham punar janma naiti mam eti sarjuna. So that liberation comes from knowing who Krishna is. Just like we recite every morning the first verse of Srimad Bhagavatam. That is explaining who Krishna is. He's the supreme personality of God at the source of all emanations, spiritual and material. So we'll stop right there. Are there any questions? Yes. Mike. Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj. Uh, Maharaj, you said uh, devotees need not to follow Devi Varna Ashram, but they are following for their own protection and to set the example. Yes. So when you say protection means uh, so that they will not fall down? No, because each position is defined. The qualities and the activity of the person is defined. So you cannot be a, a, uh, a uh, let's say, a, uh, a brahmachari who acts like a vaisha. Yeah. You see, so the brahmachari is supposed to give everything to the guru, so, uh, or to the temple, let's say, right? So that's the life of the brahmacharya. And the grihastha must give in charity because the other three orders, the uh, brahmana the, and the, uh, now the uh, brahmacharya, the, the uh, vanaprastha and the sannyasa, they don't work. They're always engaged in devotional service. So the vaishas have to support them, right? So they have to be very charitable. Right? So, so devotee must follow, basically, uh, Devi Varna Ashram. Even yeah, you though can't, they need not to, You can't be a mix. You can't yeah. be a mix. You have to be, uh, you have to stay in your, in uh, Varna or Varna. Ashrama. Well, Ashrama has a movement upwards. Varna is a more sta stable, right? Because you have a natural psychophysical nature. But if you, offer everything to Krishna in the proper way, uh, then you are making tangible spiritual advancement and you'll go back to Godhead from that whatever natural position you're, you're holding, like doing the work of a sudra or doing the work of a vaisha or, or a chatri or, or a brahmana. Right. Thank you. And then the main point is this. If, if you look in the fourth chapter, ninth verse, in the purport it says, the Vedic version, Tattvamasi, is actually applied in this case. Anyone who understands Lord Krishna to be the supreme or who says unto the Lord, you are the same supreme Brahman, the personality of Godhead, is certainly liberated instantly. And consequently, his entrance into the transcendental association of the Lord is guaranteed. In other words, such a faithful devotee of the Lord attains perfection. And this is confirmed by the following Vedic assertion. Tam eva viditvati mrityum eti nanya panta vidyate yanaya. One can attain the perfect stage of liberation from birth and death simply by knowing the Lord, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, and there's no other way to achieve this perfection. Svatasvatara Upanishad. So, if you focus on understanding Krishna, his qualities, his name, his activities, his pastimes, and so forth, you are liberated right away. And you just stick to that understanding the rest of your life, you go back to Godhead. That's how powerful knowledge of Krishna is. That's why we're hearing every day more and more mm -hmm. information about Krishna. Thank you. Yeah. And that you can do from any position in the Varna Ashram system. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, Maharaj, I have a question about that. Uh, eating habits um, for the meat or something like for example let's take an example of Chinese only right so they eat because of 
I I I ex I talked about. You explain. About, you explain yeah, how. Yeah, I explained how what had happened, right? Yeah. So so it's should we just uh, because it's now same thing incidents happen similar in like India also in my town place or something. So literally they eat like grass and they were boiling it and they're eating. So two people, right? Some people can divert it to eating meat and some people are still eating grass or something, still a vegetarian, even in that critical situation. Wait, wait, wait a minute. In the critical situation or, or in a situation of dire necessity, some people would boil the grass and eat it, you're saying, in your village? Yeah. And so, other people would eat meat. Yeah, so in China, like, so similar incidents, like uh, two different contexts and di different areas. By the way, the region. grass, you, you can't, you shouldn't swallow it, but you should chew it and get all the juice out of it. It might not be grass, maybe they say that grass, it may be some natural things, okay, okay. whatever. Oh, okay. Yeah, so it all depends upon the kind of, maybe this, I, I, people's mentality or maybe their modes why they wanted to do this and why these people wanted to do this because it might be because of their modes so we should should we just ignore them because this has happened naturally they they are helpless because they their mindset is like that they can change so unless somebody like uh, elevated well, like Prabhupada come and divert them let me understand your question your, your question is in times of emergency which happen often some people ate meat and some people just ate whatever greens they could find. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Now, the people who ate meat, they continued eating meat after the emergency was over. Is that what you're saying? Yes. Okay. So what's your question now? So now my question is, it might be, so this is happening because of the, maybe the modes of nature, what they are in, basically. No, no, all it's the happening group. because you don't have a strong leader. Right. Okay. Yeah. All right. A strong yeah. leader would stop those people from eating. Yeah, yeah. So this is the external. emergency is over. Exactly. Okay. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So some external entity has to come. We cannot just blame. Okay. Why you guys are doing this? Because that's not their no, it fault. It means that there was no strong leader. Yeah. Yeah. But but not their fault. There's problem is some external entity has to actually intervene and change them. That's normal, right? If, if, yeah. If you just have a book on Krishna consciousness but never have any association with devotees it would be much more difficult for you to become, let's say, uh, yeah. integrally following Krishna consciousness. Right, right. Okay. Okay, yeah. Okay. So Thank you, you. you have to have some devotee, right? Mm -hmm. So you are that devotee for your village. Yeah. <laughs> no. <laughs> yes, Maharaj? Yeah. Could you, I don't know if he's